Hey, welcome back. Let's have a little chat about the death of wargaming. Because it's, it's uh, according to all sources, as of, you know, most recently, it's dead and dying and it's horrible and my gosh, the sky is falling and who knows how or why, but apparently everyone's dying and they're not buying any more games and then all the publishing games companies are going to go away and there'll be no more war games, no more war gamers. Seems about 11 years ago, I heard this when I first re-engaged with the Wargaming crew uh, community. And then, you know, a couple of years ago, I heard this same story. And then five, six, seven, eight years ago, I heard this same story. Comes up every couple of years. And I don't know whether there's like a cable of people who just like trot this silly old canard out every now and then to like gin up sales for all the struggling game companies that refuse to make any adaptions or changes to the marketplace at all. They just want to pump out the same old stuff every day to the same old people and just hope that they'll keep paying regardless of the quality. But I don't think that's the case. What I think is uh, people uh, look at the marketplace and look at the people to hang around with and they go, whoa, everyone's getting old. Kevin's been around for 11 years. He's starting to look a hell of a lot older than he was. That happens, right? But here's the good news. Uh, I just saw a video. Uh, Tom, is it Tom's Wargaming or Tom's Wargame channel? He's got to be every bit of 12, right? He's playing with miniatures. He's doing Napoleonics. It's awesome. He's a historical wargamer, miniatures wargamer. How cool is that? And you might say that's the exception to the case, but it's not really. There's, there's hundreds of people joining the war game community, they're just not frequenting perhaps where you are, nor are they engaging in the same moaning and complaining that you are. They don't have the aches and pains we do, but they're around and they're doing stuff and they're engaging in the marketplace pretty assertively. Uh, the podcast Advance After Combat now has, I think that guild has 500 plus members and, uh, I'm a member over there, and I think I'm one of the oldest people there. Everybody else is in their late 40s, uh, early 30s. There's even a few late 20s year old folks. It's good. And they they have kids, and their kids are learning to play war games as well. So uh, I think that community is alive and well. And I, I was talking with a publisher, and I'll tell you who it was. It was Lock and Load Publishing. And uh, they, they said, uh, I, we were talking about the rules changes that were coming for uh, a couple of their games. And I was asking why they were trying to make these changes and why they were adjusting terminology and things like that. And David Heath uh, said to me, he goes, hey, look, you know, I, I've had all these uh, communications, this proactive engagement by people that are under 30 who are playing our games. Lock and low tactical, right? So the, the Hollywood version of ASL, you know, the faster, cleaner, easier to play game. Sorry, ASL guys, it's okay. Uh, I'm just just winding you up. Uh, lots of questions. And a girl was asking uh, David, she said, look, I don't know the difference between a tiger and a panther, and I don't really care, but I do want to know why the hit modifier here says this when it's something else here and it's something different there. And Dave's like, oh yeah, you know, got a good point, right? Uh, so he was, he, they, he's looking to adjust the way the rules work and the way the rules are presented and the information that comes to the end user so that they can get engage with the game better. What a great idea, right? Imagine taking customer feedback and, 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 acting on it and trying to make your games more approachable. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having big, meaty, crunchy war games. We, you know, we need those. We still need those. But that doesn't mean that if your game is becoming attractive to a certain niche or segment, that you don't pay attention to that segment and adjust. I think Hollenspiel is another company that does this sort of thing where they try and keep the rule books to 10 pages. That's a consumable number of pages for pretty much anyone that can read above a sixth grade level. And they can uh, they can read 10 pages and kind of work it out and, you know, 
fiddle around with it. They realized that they needed to have better charts. So they worked on getting better charts and made games more approachable. And that's fantastic. So I think there are some game companies that are really doing a good job. <clears throat> Vento Nuovo, you know, who I'm a big fan of them. So I think they do a good job with the way they use color and, if, and use color on counters and on stickers for blocks and all this sort of stuff to, to represent information. And uh, Flying Pig Games does the same thing. They're starting to use more and more color on their counters to help you know that, you know, purple means this and white means that and black means this and... Uh, and other companies do that too. Uh, GMT does that with some of their designs from uh, Simonich. The, you know, the, red, the, the red squares behind the attack number or the defense number, whatever it is, means uh, you're going to get an elite bonus and things like that. So that's all goodness. Uh, but there are companies that, uh, I, that I do not see changing and that you, you wouldn't know they existed unless you were deep in the hobby and multi-man publishing and uh decision games come to mind you know um i don't think anyone would know about uh, multi-man publishing if it wasn't for carl fong's uh hands and carl at uh nakatomi plaza on board game geek right if you didn't if you read that blog you find out more about what's going on with the multi-man publishing entity than you do from anywhere else, I think. Uh, and it's full of informative stuff. So really like that idea. And um, let's see. What else was I going to say? Because I just had a text message and it totally took me off track. Uh, so so I think there are companies that are not doing as much as they could. That's not, and I, if you don't want to, that's awesome. That's fine. That's your choice, totally. And if you do want to do something, then please do it. But I actually was uh, wanted to tune in and talk to, uh, talk to you guys about us. You know what 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 are we doing to engage players more? Because it doesn't matter how much of a crossover game, uh, how easy that is, and all the rest of it. It's about how you engage with people. Uh, I like to, whenever I can, I love to teach people a game or work with people uh, to learn a game or a system or whatever the case may be. I'm, I'm a, in fact, you're welcome to hit me up on private message if you want to learn a game. And if I have the time and I can do it in such a way that uh, facilitates things, then that's great. I'd, lo I'd love to do that. I've taught dozens and dozens of people how to play World of War and Lock and Load and some block games and other things. And they're not necessarily net new war gamers, but they're early in their, their, their uh, gaming cycle, um, war gaming experiences. And I think we can do more of that, right? Uh, you know, if someone says, hey, it's kind of like risky, you know, rather than us rolling our eyes, going, well, no, it's not, it's more complicated than that. Uh, we can go, yeah, it's kind of like risk. Let's pull risk out and play. And then let me show you, then maybe show you something different one day or something like that. I don't know. We, I think we need to do more to engage people. And this is not, to just a, a sidebar, this is not about inclusiveness, right? Because if people don't want to play and they don't fit your comfort level, you don't want to deal with a certain type of person, uh, then that's fine, right? Um, this is not about, you know, there's a whole bunch of uh, social justice stuff going on in our community right now. Uh, this is not about that. This is not about trying to, you know, open open the floodgates to every man and his dog because not every man and his dog or woman and his dog or child and his dog or whatever you may be and your cat will want to play a war game. And if they don't, that's okay. And if they do, that's okay. But if I don't want to play with you, I'm not going to. And it's as simple as that. You've got to be comfortable with the people that you want to play with and that want to play with you. Right? I've had lots and lots of opponents online and even face to face that I don't play with anymore because I don't enjoy their time. Simple as that. And a lot of people probably don't enjoy my time and that's fine too. Um, but we as a community of uh, whether you want to call us grognards or war gamers or f older folks, we should be doing something every day. And if that's you know, posting a photograph of a game we played or talking about history and then saying, oh, well, you know, there's this great title 
that I have that actually explores this. this that's what I do with my friends. When, uh, when we're sitting around talking at, at uh, dinner or whatever, one of them will cock off about something about, you know, oh, well, this is just like back when something bad happened in Hitler or whatever. And I said, oh, really? Well, you know what? There's a book about that. And I read that book. And by the way, why don't you come downstairs with me? Let me show you my collection of uh, nerdy shit. Uh, so we can do things like that to try and spark people's interest and their enthusiasm for playing board games. The whole board game community is growing exponentially right now. More and more uh, Euro gamers and Ameritrash gamers are, are joining the community and playing board games because they're sick of being on these things, on these phones and stuff, and they want to have personal interactions. So if you're the type of person that can handle personal interactions, because I know some of us aren't, right? I actually don't really like hanging out with people. I like to, I could like to be down in my little cubby hole by myself, but... I still enjoy playing war games with people uh, as much as I can. Uh, so I like to, I think we, as this rise in board gaming evolves and uh, grows, we'll be lifted with that as war gamers. People will start to sort of migrate over and they'll find us. And so when we do find that person who's curious about war games, we should do everything we can to encourage that. Um, I, you know, sometimes I get on the blog, on the forums on, on Board Game Geek, and, and I see people asking what are ostensibly really freaking stupid questions and dumb questions. And you've got to kind of stop and go, hey, where's that person coming from? Are they new to the game? You know, I, I sometimes I'll send them a little PM and go, hey, you know, where are you at with wargaming? Based on your question, it seems like you're new. What can I do to help you, right? Versus putting it all in a out in the public and maybe embarrassing them or whatever the case may be. So try reaching out to people and try helping engage them online and on Facebook and wherever. You know, I've got a, a modern warfare group, an Eastern Front warfare group, a Pacific warfare group, and an African warfare group that uh that folks are turning up to and asking questions and you know and they're engaging uh, you know 80 percent of the people in all of those groups there's a thousand in some and 400 in another and 80 in one and there's there's uh, a lot of people that are hungry to know more about history and i think ostensibly uh, about war games as well and i'm seeing a lot more people join that uh are uh, not your standard war gamer prototype uh, profile, right? So we should uh, we should be doing more as a community, and I'm going to try and do more uh, content that's relevant. I think to to newer gamers. I, I know sometimes I, I just get excited and I jump in and start doing stuff, and I don't sort of step back and explain everything. But uh, I, I'm not a tutorial guy, so I, I don't do that. But I have posted some introductory things and I've just certainly done a number of simple games that you can sort of check in on and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, I just want to share that with you because I was struck by this young man's video today that uh, was talking about his, his way to budget his way into playing Napoleonics. And he went and bought uh, the 1815 version of Risk, whatever, whatever that is, it has 300 pieces. And he's painted up all the soldiers. And that's, he's using it for DBN, which I don't even know what that is, right? Some miniatures Napoleonic game. And he's playing war games. And I guess he's got buddies he's playing with, and I think that's fabulous. And so I would, I've, I've uh, shared that on my Facebook page, I'll be putting it on the blog, the video on the blog. I'd love everyone, if you can, go ch go check out. I'll put the link down here in the in the uh, description. Go check out his video and uh, you know give him a thumbs up and and be encouraging, and uh, let's see what we can do to engage with uh, the youth and with younger people and the people that are asking questions and uh, and try and do something every day. If we did something every day, whether it's just posting a picture online about hey I'm playing this and share and. Don't be embarrassed about about it, right? I, I see a lot of people being embarrassed about the fact they play war games. This is my hobby. And this is one of the only things I do other than goof around with, with my kids who are now almost all grown up and hang out with my wife.
Uh, and, you know, sometimes I exercise, but not very often these days. So uh, I'm not embarrassed about it anymore. I used to be because I, I hate the idea of war game, right? Because it sounds like I'm some sort of, you know, want to kill babies. Well, that's not the case. Uh, I want to explore history. And so I'll, when I talk to friends who are new to this, I will say it's historical recreations or historical simulations or something like that. And then as I get to know them, I say, yeah, it's a war game. Yeah, and we use dice to represent random events and things like that. So don't be afraid of it. Just get out there and put a game on the table, roll some damn dice, have some fun, talk about it with your friends, talk about it online, post a picture, raise awareness in the world, in the world. Or something like that. Anyway, that's my little Saturday morning uh, ramble for you. I hope you <laughs> hope you stuck with it to the end, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Go make a new friend.